right, in this video, this is T's Math Tips video number 18, and we're going to put some numbers in order from greatest to least or least to greatest. Now, these two examples, they are actually from my free math practice test, and you can find that over at www.bcraftmath.com slash ATITs. I've already covered these two examples in videos from that free practice test. However, I was working with two students just this past week, and we were looking at these examples, and they wanted a faster way to arrange these numbers. And the way that I've covered it in the videos is to think about money, but I do want to share an alternative technique and it actually involves fractions. Now, before you just stop this video and think, okay, I don't wanna handle fractions, I don't like fractions. Well, let's talk about it because you can learn a faster way here to approach these problems. And to motivate the idea, I just want you to think about one fourth and three fourths. Which one of these is bigger? Uh, one fourth, think about that. That's one fourth of a dollar. That's 25 cents. And three fourths of a dollar, that's three quarters. That's 75 cents. Three fourths is bigger than one fourth. Now we can make that direct comparison because, yes, we are thinking about money, but also notice we have a common denominator here. We have a four and a four. And when you find a common denominator for all of your terms, fractions, or even percentages and decimals. I'm gonna talk about that one in this video too. Once you find a common denominator and you want to put things in order, all you have to focus on are the numerators. With that said, let's focus on this first example. Now, both examples here, we are arranging them from greatest to least, but if you had to go from least to greatest, you would just reverse this process. So let's look at our denominators. Eight, three, four, six, and 12. Now, I have mentioned this in previous videos. When you're trying to find a common denominator, focus on the biggest denominator first, which is 12. And let's ask ourselves, does six go into 12? Yes. Four go into 12? Yes. Three go into 12? Yes. Does eight go into 12? No. So 12 is not going to be our common denominator. Now let's pick the next thing that 12 will go into, and that's gonna be 24, right? Well, since three, four, and six went into 12, we can guarantee that three, four, and six will go into 24 as well. Now, the eight, the one that was causing issues, does eight go into 24? Absolutely. So therefore, we're going to write out these one, two, three, four, five fractions. We're gonna write them out with a 24 as our common denominator. And now that we have changed our denominators to 24, we have to ask ourselves, okay, what did we do to the eight to get 24? We took eight times three to get 24. So let's do the same thing for the nine. Nine times three will give us 27. 27 over 24 is the same thing as nine over eight. Repeating this process, three times eight gives us 24. Seven times eight will give us 56. That is our new fraction for this second one. The third one here, four times six gives you 24. Five times six will give you 30. Six times four gives you 24. Five times four gives you 20. And then this last one here, 12 times two gives us 24. 17 times two gives us 34. So now that we have a common denominator and we want to arrange these from greatest to least, the biggest numerator will be our biggest number, our biggest fraction. So since we are arranging from greatest to least, the biggest numerator we have with these common denominators is the 56 over 24. That was the second fraction here, so therefore our greatest fraction is going to be the 7 thirds. Up next would be the 34 over 24, which is the last fraction, so 17 over 12 is going to be our second largest followed by the 30 over 24. That was this third one here, which is 5 fourths. And then we had the 27 over 24. That's the 9 over 8. And then lastly, the 20 over 24, which is 5 over 6. And something else to point out here too, maybe I did mention this in the original video where I made this one, 5 over 6 is the only fraction up here that is not improper. All of these other fractions are improper because we have bigger over smaller, bigger over smaller, bigger over smaller. Uh, this one here, bigger over smaller, but this one is not. You know, this fraction here is not improper. So that is definitely going to be the smallest one, the least one. And that's why we had that as the last piece to our answer here. 
So now that we have that idea across, let's focus on these decimals and percent. And let me give you some other pointers on working with decimals, percents, and converting those to fractions. So just going across from left to right, negative one. I'm going to write that as negative one over one. We just wrote that number as a fraction. This second one here, negative three over two, that is already a fraction. And now this third one, let's talk about that, 1.1. There are various ways that you can write decimals as fractions. Here's one way, check this out. If I put 1.1 and I write it over one, because I'm really kind of doing the same thing I did here, this is a fraction, but typically we don't want to put decimals and fractions mixed together. So a little tip here is to take this decimal, move it to the right until you have a whole number. So we're going to move it one place to the right. And as long as you do the same thing with the decimal at the bottom, well, you may say, where is the decimal? It's right there. And if we move it one place to the right and we squeeze in a zero, we can write 11 over 10. So again, what I did here is I moved the decimal up top so that I had a whole number. That gives me 11. And as long as we move the same number of places to the right in our denominator, we are good to go. Notice real quick, if I take 11 divided by 10, which is that fraction that we have down here in blue, we do get 1.1, which is that same number here. So let's move on to this fourth one here, 13%. Now the thing with percents, we can always write a percent as that number out of 100. 13% 13 is 13 out of 100. Moving on to the next one, we already have a fraction. And then moving on to this one here, 0 0.09, 0 0.09. So what we can do here is we can write that over one, just like we did with the 1.1. And now we have to move this decimal two places to the right, which gives us a nine. And as long as we move the decimal the same number of places to the right, we'll have to add two zeros here. So that's nine over 100. Notice if I take nine over 100, we get the exact same decimal here, 0 0.09 that we had right there. And then this last one here on the end, 115%. Again, you can take the number and you can put it over 100. 115 over 100 is 115%. So now we have fractions for all of these. Our next step is to find a common denominator. Now, some of you may be thinking that this is just as slow as converting everything and thinking about money. Well, depending on how comfortable you are with fractions, this may be a faster technique for you. And if we look at all of our denominators here, the biggest denominator is 100. We actually have that in three of these. And notice the tens, 10 will definitely go into 100, two will definitely go into 100, and this denominator of one will go into 100 as well. So therefore, we're gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven fractions with a 100 as our common denominator. So let's write those out. And starting with the first fraction here, you know, we're taking one, this denominator, times 100 to get 100. So if we multiply by 100 up top, we will get negative 100 over 100. And that definitely is equal to negative one. Be careful with this one here. Two times 50 gives us 100. So if we take this negative three times 50, we get negative 150. Negative 150 over 100 is the same thing as negative 3 halves. 10 times 10 is 100. 11 times 10 is 110. Just notice if I take 110 divided by 100, we still get that 1.1 that we started off with earlier. That's perfect. Now this red one here, that stays as 13 over 100. The next one, 10 times 10 gives us 100. 9 times 10 gives us 90. And then this green one here, we didn't change the denominator, so we still have 9 over 100. And the same thing for this last one. We did not change that either. So this one does say, again, to arrange from greatest to least. So since we have common denominators, and let's watch out for these negatives. These are definitely going to be the, the least numbers, the smallest numbers. But the biggest numerator we have is the 115 not the negative 150. That's actually going to be the smallest one since it is the most negative. So the 115 over 100, that was this last one here. So we have 115% for our greatest one, followed by the next biggest numerator is the 110 over 100, 
which was this 1.1 in blue. So that's the second largest. Then we have the 90 over 100. That was the 9 over 10, the 9 tenths. Up next will be the 13 over 100, which is what we had in red, and that was the 13%. Followed by the 9 over 100, and that was the 0 0.09. And then we had these other two negatives here. And remember, the more negative a number is, the smaller it is. So the negative 150 is going to be the smallest number. The negative 100 over 100, which corresponds to negative 1, that's going to be next to last followed by this negative 3 halves. And that negative 3 halves was that negative 150 over 100. And there you have it. These numbers are arranged from greatest to least. Now, if you did need to go from least to greatest, it would be the reverse order of this right here. And there you have it, an alternative approach to writing numbers in order from greatest to least, or just bear in mind, you may be asked to do from least to greatest. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.